All right, welcome to Vulcan, everyone. This is Shadow Trake. So this is going to be kind of like a mini series for optimizing and upgrading our, our face change heat pumps. And so we're gonna start off with the simple face change devices, which I've made a previous video um, before. And I had mentioned in that video about specific fill rates for safety. Um, most of the times when I made face change devices, I never really included a safety feature. And that is because predominantly the face change devices are surprisingly well built. Or the way the devs have made it, it's they are extremely robust and hard to break. Uh, condensation and evaporation chambers can safely hold frozen gases, liquids, and gases. And they don't to my knowledge, they don't seem to have an overpressure safety, but they tend to not have a lot of pressure. And so, I will go over the safeties because part of the fine tuning of the face change process is that we will be messing around with different sorts of gases and pressures. And you just need to be kind of aware of what could potentially happen as you are messing with this, with uh, your heat pump setup. And so we'll start with face change devices before eventually moving on to building our own custom evaporators and condensation condensers. So to start us off with the face change devices and the safeties, they're again, remarkably robust. So I have two setups, the simple and the one with the counter flow, because it'll be used, it, it'll be helpful to discuss what happens. Um, to go over my setup, both of those are filled with exactly 900 moles of pollutants, so that they have some form of fill. Uh, the evaporation chamber is about seven and a half liters for both systems, you know, give or take, you know. Uh, I have three tanks of different temperatures. The red tank is super hot steam, 430 Celsius. The blue tank is relatively cool CO2, 30 Celsius. And then, of course, the white tank is extremely cold nitrogen at the freezing point, or cold enough that it'll freeze the pollutants. And so I want to be able to handle the extremes on all, um, both of my setups to see what happens. And doing this test offline, I was surprised at just how well the safety measures of the face change devices are. Um, one interesting thing to note is that the atmospherics that stationers does seems to be kind of hit or miss i had two results that happened in one result i could i was going to experience a catastrophic pipe failure and the second result nothing happened and so we will see what result this is as i talk about it so first up we're gonna stress test the condensation so when I connect both sides to the blue, it's just basically a stable system. Pollutants are going to cycle through, condense, and evaporate here to try to get that down to 20 Celsius. So the first test we're going to do is we're going to attach this to the hot pipe. This way, the condensation chamber is going to get super hot. It's not going to condense. Now, because no liquids are coming out at these temps, it's not going to affect the liquid pipe system. However, the liquids in the evaporation chamber are going to keep evaporating because they still need to cool the blue pipe down to 20 Celsius. Which means that the gas pipe between the two devices is going to slowly pull your pollutants. Now, this will eventually hit a point where you actually get condensation. Now, originally I said that this condensation could lead to broken broken pipes. But one of the interesting things that I discovered recently is that the condensation valve w may not suck in these gases, but when condensation begins to occur, it will actually suck in the liquids. That was something I did not expect. And then this is this comes to where the 50-50 how stationers handles it come. Stationers will either have the liquids that as soon as they hit the liquid pipe network to either be instantly sucked into the evaporation chamber or they will evaporate a little bit first in the liquid pipe network and you will see a massive temperature spike. 
And it seems like in this case, stationary is pushing all the liquids generated by this condensing pipe system straight to the evap chamber. As you can see, the temps are increasing here. But no temperature increase is happening in my liquid pipe network. So this is one of the two cases, and I don't know how to manipulate this to make force the other case. Because the other case will be that 409 to 410 Celsius pollutants hits the liquid pipe network, really heats this up, evaporates, and overpressure, and kaboom. And that's kind of... I guess an interesting result that I was not expecting to happen. So let me go ahead and cool this chamber down before I swap to freezing. My original hypothesis was that... Excuse me, lots of sneezing. So I had expected liquids to condense in the gas pipe, thus stressing the pipe network and breaking it. And when I found out that the condensation chamber actually took in liquids as well, I expected then for the hot liquids to evaporate in the liquid pipe network and then cause an overpressure situation. And that worked one time, but the next time I tried to do it, it didn't. And instead all went to the evaporation chamber. So something about the way the stationers handles the atmospheric means you get one case or the other. So this kind of could lead you to a false safety margin. If you if your system goes way out of whack, you're kind of 50-50 as to whether your pipe systems will survive or you will have a catastrophic failure. Now, in the other case, if we freeze the condensation chamber, uh, you'll get some condensation. But then once the pollutants freeze, you won't really get anything else coming out of it. And that's kind of the neat thing about this. Any gases that the evaporation chamber pushes out will get brought in here and immediately freeze and nothing happens to the liquid pipe network. And so that is one pretty good benefit about these chambers. They're pretty robust. Now, as I'm waiting for this to kind of recover from whatever leftover heat the evaporation chamber is pushing out from the evaporation, you will see some condensation happen, and it's going to drop the temps a little bit here. Or once again, the, evapor yeah, the evaporation chamber will suck in the extremely cold liquids and just evaporate them. And so it's kind of 50-50 as to what happened. So now let's move on to the evaporation chamber side. What will happen if we st stress it out? So we'll... Let this kind of hit uh, ambient temperature. Uh, that was quick. So this is back to normal. Now, when we attach the evaporation chamber to a lot of heat, the expectation is that it's going to super... <laughs> all of the liquids will practically instantly evaporate, and that's what is happening. And they are pooling inside the gas pipe network. And so then the interesting thing about that is that you could reach overpressure problems, but in this case, because this is so extremely hot, you're not going to see any condensation. If the system is just barely unstable, that the temperature of the pollutants evaporating here will condense here, you could have some condensation issues. But as I have found out, the condensation chamber will happily take those in and push them out here. And so, again, it's kind of 50-50 what you get. So, if the evaporation chamber gets too hot, you'll just flood the gas pipe network with a lot of gases, increasing the pressure for sure. You may or may not have condensation depending on the phase change diagram of your gases. The same point though, or a similar point, if you super cool the gases here, what you do is eventually evaporation stops and any would-be cold freezing pollutants is actually not gonna get into this gas pipe network. 
So once again, the evaporation chamber will safely freeze everything and keep them locked down. Eventually the condensation chamber will stop working because it no longer has gases. And so this at least tells me, or at least makes these chambers extremely user-friendly for a first draft for a tier 1 system. So with that, so long as you can keep the system working within the coolant's temperature ranges, this should be fairly stable. The only thing you would need to worry about is overfilling this, which would then cause potential overpressure issues in your gas pipe network. But even then, the condensation chamber will still take the liquids out just fine. All right. Now, the only reason the safeties for the basic system work very well is because the condensation chamber really do take in the, the gases from the pipe network very quickly. And the evaporation chamber also is a pretty powerful pump for taking liquids from the liquid pipe network. When you eventually put heat exchangers to swap the temperatures between the two pipes, you break up the pipe network and you see that there's damage due to presence of liquids. That was an earlier test. Let's fix that. And because of this, that means now this condensation chamber will suck gases from only this pipe network, leaving this independent pipe network to potentially have problems with condensation, at least until the condensation chamber can safely take out the gases here to promote the flow. At the same point, the evaporation chamber will only suck out liquids from this pipe network, which leaves this pipe network vulnerable to potential overpressure or freezing issues from the condensation chamber. So let's tie this in to see it. We will see more issues with the evaporation chamber side. So first we'll get the system kind of going. And let's uh, superheat up the pipe network and we'll be able to better see what happens. So this is going to heat up. There's going to be no, no condensation happening here. Right now we're going to see gases pool in the gas pipe network and technically not do anything yet because no condensation is occurring. But as soon as condensation occurs, that means those liquids are going to start to come in here, get really heated up, and you'll start to see a lot of heat show up in the liquid pipe networks. And again, this is all, this is kind of why I recommended two to five liters in the evaporation chamber, because then you won't have as much potential gases evaporating to cause issues in your pipe networks. So we're almost at condensation point. There we go, condensation's occurring. And so here's what I expected to see. You'll see that the temperatures are rapidly increasing because now I'm having hot liquids condensing with super hot chamber. Temperatures are rising and more than likely is going to get to the point to break these pipes. You're gonna see these cold gases are trying to desperately cool down the hot liquids coming out. But you're still going to see pressure increases. Now, if I were to leave this alone, more than likely this is going to fail. Due to overpressure in the liquid pipes. But I don't really want to let that fail just yet. As you can see, we're probably going to easily hit 6 megapascals. So let's get this fixed up. And let it start cooling down. Before we freeze it. See, now that, it's, now that things are fixing up, we're going to get the whole system kind of stable. All right, now let's freeze the system. Now, just like before, 
it's going to get this really cold. But once again, it's going to kind of stop doing anything because there's not going to be any more condensation occurring. And so nothing will end up happening to this pipe network. And it's not until it starts recovering that it starts to push really, really cold liquids out. But that's just going to help to cool down the incoming gases some more. So, yeah. Overall, again, I'm really surprised how friendly these devices are at kind of being fixed. And you heard a little creak from frozen gases and that's because as this was warming up some frozen liquids came out hit this pipe that's where you see that damage and that's why you see that damage so let's wait for this to fix up and we'll we'll freeze and really heat up the evaporation side okay that's good and recover we're all good pipes are Eh, kind of happy. All right. Now, just like we saw in the on the simple phase change heat pump, we're going to heat up and force all of this to evaporate. Now, the hard part with the evaporation chamber is that these hot gases will be heat exchanging with liquids from the condensation chamber. And so the biggest problem with that is when I feed this 420 Celsius steam to just really heat this up and push out literally all the liquids at that temp, you're going to see very hot gas here, heat exchanging with relatively cold liquids and put extremely hot liquids in this pipe network. Uh, it is going to quite easily fail because of that, and you're going to see these problems a lot in Venus when somehow your system fails. So see, now it's hot. See, this is getting hot. And now this gas pipe is, liquid pipe is getting hot. And you can see, you're gonna fail. This is going to fail very quickly. And honestly, I don't know that I can technically save that, but we're gonna try. <laughs> so ironically enough, the evaporation side is going to have the majority of your issues. And this is probably why you would need safeties, at least on this side. But again, this is for a very badly destabilized system. It, like You have to have some serious shock that happened to get this behaving in this way. Alright, so we save that and we have 37% overpressure damage. That's fine. Now, freezing would be something similar, but again, because the evaporation chamber will stop evaporating when it gets cold, it's not likely that we're going to push freezing cold pollutants in here to freeze your pipes. It's not likely. Unless for some reason you're trying to evaporate pollutants to the freezing point, you're, we're not going to see damage coming this way. All right, so basically to sum up, the phase change heat pumps are surprisingly friendly in regards to safety. I would still recommend taking some measures of safety uh, for gas pipe and liquid pipe overpressurization, but largely it is unneeded. Now, I want to say this with a tidbit, that the only reason I say it's unneeded is because I have this system not at full capacity. If your evaporation chamber hits 20 liters of liquid, and you have some standing liquid in your liquid pipe network, you need to take some safety measures to protect your heat pump setup. Because that all of the liquids are a potential pressure and gas that is going to evaporate in your evaporation chamber and all of that gas will come back to haunt you either as condensation in your gas pipes or overpressure in your liquid pipes or if somehow things get really screwed up overpressure in your gas pipes 
uh, kind of 50-50. And as we saw the way that Stationeers handles the uh, atmospherics, do you really want to gamble 50-50 as to whether Stationeers will save your gas pipes from uh, over temperature effect or not? It's... Yeah. So, before I go too far into this, um, the original heat pump f phase change heat pump video was in a patch before we had utility pipe kits. With the addition of utility pipe kits, we uh, insulated utility pipe kits. Let me just wiki them. Insulated utility pipe kits, yep. You can add quite a bit of volume to your gas and liquid pipe networks. This is going to be one method of saving your pipes from phase change or overpressurization. Because after all, more volume means more space that you can use more space for your gases. All right. So that is it for this video. Uh, when we return, we're going to start with some optimizations we can do for both heat pumps and see just how much of an improvement uh, those small optimizations give us. So thank you for your time. Hope to see you soon.